So here we are on another edition of Bantam Small Talk TV, sponsored by Build and Timber. More than just good wood. Today we're talking to Mark Christian, the lead singer of Sawdust. So Mark, how are you doing? I'm um, not bad, Nick. How about yourself? Yep, I'm absolutely fine. So we've just done a quick radio interview, which hopefully will be aired soon. Our first question, Mark, was, with Bradford City having played three games this season, obviously winning both league games, but unfortunately losing in the cup, what are your actual thoughts to the beginning of the season? Well, I think that um, I'd be cautiously optimistic. Yeah, obviously disappointing to lose in the cup. You know, we missed a chance to uh, you know have a big money spinning tie. You know, we've had some great nights over the over the years with that. But, um, it allows us to concentrate on the league, though. You know, and um, you can't ask more than winning both league games. You know, um, I've, I've not been to any games yet this season, but uh, it sounds like we're playing. You know. We're a little bit more decisive in the last third. One problem I think we had last season was that you know, when you when it got into the final third, we were just going backwards and forwards without anyone real putting a penetrating pass in. But I, from what I've heard, it's a lot better than that this season. Stewart's obviously gone and bought you know some um, you know more attack-minded players who you know can, can give a final product. So yeah, I'm, I'd be optimistic. You know, it's obviously early days yet. You know, I always remember 1999. We lost about the first three or four games. All we know. We know what happened there. We obviously know what happened after that. So, uh, yeah, nice, nice to start the way we have. But yeah, let's let's see where we are after ten games or so. And obviously, we have made a better start to this season than last season because we'd lost both. Of, we're out of the cup at the same stage this time last season. I think. Um, I think it was was it we lost to four four one swind in the opening game. Actually, last season, it was a nil-nil draw with Port Vale in the opening game. I, th- I think it took us quite a few games to score a goal, if I remember rightly. And that was, obviously, that continued to be the problem for the rest of the season, scoring goals. Obviously, we had a great defence. But, uh, yeah, if we if we could have put the ball in the net a bit more, you know, maybe if we had Charlie White from the start of the season, I think that, you know, we could have been up there automatic. But hopefully, we could be there this season. And uh, so far this season, unfortunately, we seem to be... Where we were good in defence last year, this at the moment we seem to be conceding. So, if we can obviously cut that out, which McCall will definitely address, uh, what position do you think the club can finish this year? Do you think we can better last season's position, or think we'll be just outside the playoffs this year? Well, if you look at Fleetwood last season, they were you know fighting for automatic promotion right up until the last game. It's only. I think Bolton only pipped them the last game when Bolton beat Peterborough. But, you know, so if Fleetwood could do that last season, there's absolutely no reason why we can't uh, go for automatic this season. There's obviously some strong teams in there, you know. Um, Blackburn have obviously not started in the way that we would have expected. But, you know, I expect Fleetwood to be strong again. But, yeah, I'd, I'd say we should be we should be up there. And now I would hope that we could be challenging for automatic promotion. And so, obviously, let's talk about Sawdust now, your, your new band. Obviously, you've just joined the band and you've done, uh, I think, two or three gigs, is it? Um, how did you first get involved with the Sawdust and what made you want to join them? Well, I'd just moved back from um, from Liverpool. I've been living there for for about two years. And I've, obviously, as anyone around here knows, Yorkshiremen don't travel well, so I was delighted to come back home. And um, it was just a chance meeting in a pub where I was talking to the guitarist who said that they were looking for a new singer and asked if I asked if I wanted to get involved. Now I've obviously been I've been doing music for years, you know, mainly solo acts. I used to do but early tribute acts, but um, being a band is a totally different thing for me. So it was it was a great challenge for me, and uh, yeah, so far I've really enjoyed it. Yeah, done three gigs so far, and it's it's absolutely fantastic. And obviously, I've been down to one of them, which was in the Tavern. Uh, I've managed to take a few photos for you and footage and that's available on the Facebook or oh, it will be soon anyway um, my f- question, next question is you don't have to be a song that you particularly sing at the moment or whether you're thinking about doing it but what's your favourite song and are you thinking about perhaps covering doing it soon yeah my favourite song is uh, ever is without a doubt um, Don't Dream It's Over by a Crowded House I've got great memories of that song uh, we don't as you stated, we don't actually play it in Sawdust. I've played it myself, you know, in solo acting other bands that I've been in over the years. But, um, yeah, 
it's um, real nice uplifting song, and it, um, it always reminds me of being sat in a bar somewhere in um, in Lanzarote one afternoon about twelve years ago. So yeah, it's got, the song's definitely got good memories for me. I've I mentioned it once or twice to the band. It's a little bit softer than what we'd normally play, but then again, we've just started doing "Living Next Door to Alice" by uh, by Smokey, so it's it's probably in a, it's probably got a similar feel to it. So yeah, maybe I'll be able to convince them to play it. Is, is that the clean version or the uh, um, rudy, rudy version, which we can't really say the word, but it, it, it rounds with book? Well, we play the clean version. We, there's, no, there's no bad language coming off stage. If, if members of the audience choose to do that, then that's, that's completely beyond our control. Yep, obviously, um, you're not the only one in the band. Would you like to tell us the names of the rest of the people in the band and what's their position, whether the guitarist, if there's another singer, or et cetera? Well, there's uh, there's Mike, the guitarist. He was uh, he was the one who uh, got me involved with the band. He's been a member of Sawdust um, since Sawdust started playing about six seven years ago. Um, Adam, the bass player, um, he sings as does Mike as well. So yeah, we've got three vocalists effectively in the band. Adam, Adam plays bass, and unfortunately, he's a Leeds fan, but so we won't say too much about that. And Kyle, our our drummer, we've we've just recruited him, and he's a very Keith Moon style drummer. Um, I'm still having to get used to standing, being stood right in front of him on stage because it's really loud stood in front of him. Yep, so. um, obviously, you'll, you'll have some gigs coming up soon. Uh, would you like to tell us when you're playing and perhaps where so people can come down and watch you? And I advise you people, honestly, get down there. They're a brilliant band. Well, we're doing uh, Queens, a pub in Queensbury. I think it's called George III or something like that. We're playing there... Um, week on Sunday so that's the Sunday night before the bank holiday I think we're starting about 7pm then and the week after um, it's obviously Bingley Music Live now what Sodas have always traditionally done is uh, playing free pubs in free nights around Bingley so um, we'll be playing the Brown Cow on the Friday night or is it the Tavern on the Friday night I can't remember please check the website to uh, confirm that um, the other one on the Saturday night and then on Sunday night we're in the Ferrans so yeah free Three gigs and three nights. We can't, we all can't wait for that one. I've been reliably informed it's the best weekend of the year for us as a band. So uh, going on beyond that, we've got gigs booked through to the rest of the year. We're playing at the Acorn in Eldwick in November. We're playing a Ginger Goose in Bradford on the 16th of December. So uh, hopefully we'll be starting taking bookings for 2018 soon as well. And if people are obviously want to book you and they want to find out perhaps a bit more information and see what you like, where can they find this information? Is it, have you got a website or is it just mainly on, on your Facebook page? Yeah, I don't think hardly anyone uses a website these days. There's nothing you can't. There's nothing you can do on a website that you can't do on Facebook. So yeah, we manage everything on Facebook. Um, if you if you type Sawdust into uh, into Facebook, you'll come up with a few woodwork sites, but you'll also come up with uh, a classic rock covers band as well. That's us. So all contact information's on there. Um, if you want to you know, bookers or photos, videos, things about the band, you know, you can link through to our own personal pages if you want to stalk us. So, uh, yeah, just get on there and please click like, you know, uh, the more likes we get, the better. Uh, going on to back to Bradford City, of course, so we both support. Out of all the players that were signed, who's your who's your favourite player out of the, the new signings? At the moment, I'm beginning to like, uh, I like Paul on, but I also like Reeves, but yourself, we all have different opinions. Well, like I said, I've not seen a game yet, but uh, I'm, I am going on this Saturday against Blackburn. But the player who's excited me most from what I've heard and seen on the clips and all that is Shane McCartan. Uh, saw all the free kicks that he scored for Accrington last season. It looks fantastic. And obviously, he's just made his debut for Northern Ireland. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing him play. But, yeah, Polion, he, he looks great. From Obviously, he scored two, two goals in the last two games. You can't ask a lot more than that, really, can you? No, and do you think Charlie Wack will be back soon? Do you think he'll get back into the team? I mean, personally, I still hope he gets a chance, but do you think, what do you think to Wack's chances this year? I like Charlie Wack. Um, obviously, we may have him moved back from Liverpool. I didn't get to too many games last season, but I did see him against Bolton. He looked a superb front man. So, yeah, I really hope that uh, Charlie Wack will be back in the team. I really like the look of him. I think it could be the 20, 25 goal season, man, that we've we've missed really since, uh, since Windass, I guess. Yeah. How long have you actually supported Bradford City? Um, can you perhaps remember your first game? That's a test for you, Mark. I can remember it very well. It was a uh, defeat, unfortunately. It was uh, in September 1990, so we're talking, well, 27 years ago now. It was um, a 1-0 home defeat to Swansea. This is in the days when Mark Leonard, Sean McCarthy, Greg Abbott were playing. Paul Tomlinson was in goal. And it actually took three games for me to see my first goal. I remember we played Wigan in the third game, and... Um, 
went 1-0 down again as we had in my previous two games but then Sean McCarthy equalised and I remember him scoring the winner in the last minute and yeah that was the that was the first last minute goal I ever saw and yeah it's probably still it's probably still one of the best memories to be honest and what's your best uh, obviously just told you, apart from that what's your most memorable memory with it with is it one of the Wembley wins or is it perhaps beating um, our neighbours down the road well, it's been some fantastic memories. Um, too, too many to say in the time that we got here. In terms of, I've never actually been to any of the games where we got promoted. You know, obviously they would have they would have stood out. I think in terms of, if you include like all games, whether I went to them or not, I think getting promoted to the Premier League was probably the, the best memory because obviously getting to the Capital One Cup final was arguably a bigger achievement. You know, three teams get promoted from the Championship every season. You know how how long is it since a team from the fourth division got to the cup final? But in terms of an achievement for the club, getting to the Premier League that was fantastic. Obviously, staying there a year, year later was great. Uh, games that I've actually been to that I enjoyed. Um, talking league games, I think the Barnsley at home in nineteen ninety eight. That that was a game where Gordon Watson scored two goals in the last three minutes to for us to win two one. And I think it was the first time that season that we really thought that we could get promoted. Other, other one-off games that stand out. Any time we beat Huddersfield, I've seen that happen twice at, at their place. Uh, Nottingham Forest away in 1995 when uh, Big Stick scored in, in injury time for us to go through. I think it was 5-4 in aggregate. So, yeah, I've had some fantastic memories. But any game where we win away from home, because I don't seem to get to see too many wins away from home when I go. Well, so going back to Sorda, so in case people have, don't know what type of band you are, what sort of Bandy eye and what sort of songs do you tend to cover so our viewers can have an insight as to what you actually sing and what you're all about, please. Well, we're, we're marked as a, as, a, as a classic rock band. That's traditional what Sawdust has always been. But, you know, as the years have gone by, they've you know, branched out to sort of more more conventional stuff, you know. So it was started off playing Deep Purple and T-Rex and things like that, you know, the Beatles, Stones. But as the years have gone by, they've gone, you know, Brought some more modern stuff in as well. We, you know, we, we go into the 90s with Green Day. We do some Oasis and also, you know, some more recent stuff like the Kaiser Chiefs. And, uh, you know, I think we're going to be looking to bring in quite a few more modern songs into it. So, yeah, it's marked as classic rock, but it's um, anything that goes down in the audience, really. Yeah, we'll do a couple more questions. Is there anything, any further messages that you'd like to give perhaps to any members of the band or say anything else about your band? Perhaps a message... You know, because I, I know you're extremely thankful to Mike and the band for giving you this opportunity, and I know that you love doing it. Absolutely, I'm really grateful to the lads for letting me be in their band. It's uh, probably been, probably the best things that have happened to me musically. Anyway, like I said, I've I've been uh, I've been performing on my own for you know quite a long time. I, I lived in Tenerife when I was 21. I went over there on my own and uh, did about five months on the entertainment circuit over there. And then I did a Buddy Holly tribute act over over here after that, and so this is the first time I've been in a in a in a decent established band, and yeah, I'm absolutely loving it. It's uh, definitely the best thing that's musically ever happened to me. So I, yeah, I'm really enjoying it, and long may it continue. And we'll have a quick one last question about Bradford City. Obviously, what do you think to the kits this season? Which is your favourite one? Is it the Barcelona style one, or is it the home one, or perhaps even the white one? My personal one is probably the Barcelona one, and then. Home kit very closely behind that. Yeah, definitely Barcelona one. I've got that one. Um, I don't know why. I've, I've always preferred the away the away shirt. I, I love our colours. They're so unique throughout the league. But yeah, for some reason, I've always preferred the away shirt. I think it's because some of the greatest performances I've seen have been wearing the away shirt. And obviously, we were promoted in the away shirt. So yeah, I've always, I've always had a tendency to prefer the away shirt. So thanks for being interviewed, Mark. And that's another edition of Bunch of Small Talk, sponsored by Build and Timber. That's Moa. Thank you, Scudwood. Thanks, Mark. Cheers, Dick.